CWI prep course, fillet weld gauge, module 10, part 2. Learning objectives. In this module, we're going to touch base on fillet weld gauges, how to use them, how they're used, just kind of a general overview of the fillet weld gauges and what they look like, how they're used, how you approach looking at uh, sizing a fillet weld. Visual welding inspection is the most widely used method of non-destructive welding examination. It is low cost and can be applied rapidly and effectively. Visual inspection is basically limited to detection of surface defects, but if it is employed by properly trained and experienced personnel, surface conditions can be detected that might recommend further examination by other NDE methods. Visual inspection can often detect surface defects and require repair before examination by other methods that are more expensive and time consuming. So what's this telling us? It's telling us that we can use VT to catch things that might lead to other things and there's no sense in shooting or conducting further examination until the, the visual testing passes. So just something to mull over but VT is a very valuable tool gives you a lot of insight into what's going on the workmanship of the welds and things like this there are a variety of items that can be used in visual inspection rulers tape measures fillet weld gauges undercut gauges calipers boroscopes remote crawlers with cameras there's a whole assortment of items that you can use for visual inspection of base materials and welds. Probably the biggest is going to be a fillet weld gauge, but there's a whole laundry list of items such as undercut gauges and reinforcement gauges that can be utilized for visual inspection. And you should stock your little toolkit appropriately so that you can, you know, if, when it comes time to verify that a weld is the right size you've got the correct equipment to make the the call and disposition the weld accordingly or the defect or you know the dimensions of said item visual inspection vt visual weld inspection should begin with an examination of the base metal prior to the start of fabrication obvious defects that are detected such as seams laminations or scabs can be repaired or the material rejected before welding is begun. This can save time and money if done correctly. Visual inspection requires that prior to welding, the weld joint edges and adjacent surfaces shall be examined for proper edge preparation, dimensions and finish, clearance dimensions of backing strips, rings and consumable inserts, alignment and fit up of the pieces being welded, verification of correct materials by check of material test reports, verification of cleanliness requirements. These are all things that need to be done prior to the start of welding and it can save you a lot of time and money later on because you've looked at all of these things and it doesn't turn into an oh darn later on where you're trying to figure out what to do because you didn't have the right clearance dimensions or the backing strip or you did something wrong. Maybe you used the wrong materials. This can get expensive pretty quick. And it can a lot of this stuff can be caught up front where you just take a look and um, take a look at the base metals and see what's going on prior to fabrication. Fillet welds are designed based on their leg sizes. If the plans show a fillet weld size of 5 16 of an inch, then each leg of the weld needs to measure to that dimension. If either leg is under the specified dimension, then the strength required for that joint will be less than what the joint was designed for and weld metal must be added. The throat of the weld should also be checked. The leg is in the vertical and horizontal dimensions and the throat is at the distance between the legs known as the hypotenuse. So you can see the leg of the fillet, the leg of the fillet, the size of the weld, the theoretical throat, all of these are on a convex fillet weld. 
and on the left you can see a standard fillet weld gauge that will be utilized to measure a fillet weld. Just in case anybody doesn't know what convex and concave are, here's a couple of fillet welds. One is showing a concave with the actual throat of the weld and the other one is showing the convex with the actual throat of the weld. We're going to use fillet weld gauges to measure the actual throat and the leg of the welds to make sure that the welds are properly sized. This way we know that the person who's buying what they're buying gets what they get. So concave versus convex. Here's a fillet weld gauge. You can see that the size is listed on there and then the concave side and the convex side. The concave side is just um, circular and then the other one's got two arcs and the flat spot in the middle. So you've got the concave side and the convex side. And notice that each fillet weld size has its own fillet weld gauges. It's about my third time through this slide trying to explain it, but I think I got a grasp on how to explain it. You guys don't need to know that, but anyways, here we go. Okay, this is a fillet weld gauge, and you can see you've got two different sides. They both measure the same thing, but one side is for concave fillet welds, which I've outlined in green. And then the other one is for convex fillet welds. So you can see over on the right, I've got the little graphic there on you're measuring convex welds. And then on the next one, you're measuring concave welds. They're both measuring the same thing, but it's just checking to make sure that you've got the right amount of material in there. It, it doesn't seem right that it's measuring the same thing, but it is. But it just has to do with how the fillet weld looks. Is it concave or convex? We'll go to the next slide and hopefully explain a little better. Fillet weld gauge. The fillet weld gauge blade must be flush to the base material with the tip touching the vertical member. For convex welds, Use the single arc corners for measurement. Place single arc edge flush to the base metal so the blade tip touches the vertical member. If the tip touches the vertical member, the weld size is as indicated on the weld gauge. For concave welds, use the double arc corners for determining if the welds are excessively concave. If they are, more filler metal is required to build weld throat to the size where the tip between the double arc touches. Place double arc edge flush to the base material so tip touches vertical member. If the tip between the double arc touches the center of the weld, the weld is the correct size and is the size indicated on the fillet weld gauge. See figures 18A and 18B. This is a fillet weld gauge measuring a convex fillet weld. You can see that the size of weld we're, or the gauge we're using is a 5 16 inch weld. And you can see there's a, that's in green. And the red outline shows you what we're looking at. If we've got enough weld metal in there for a 5 16 inch weld, there should be no gap in that red oval but we see that there's a gap in there so that's telling us that we have not gotten enough metal in there to meet the requirements for the weld call out. So this weld fails and is not a 5 16 inch weld. And we did this using a convex fillet weld gauge. Once again using a 5 16 inch fillet weld gauge 
to measure a fillet weld, you can see how we've got the blade of the fillet weld gauge flush against the vertical member and then it's touching the horizontal member because in this instance we're measuring the horizontal leg of the fillet weld. We're not measuring the vertical leg. You've got to measure both legs of a fillet weld. So in this instance we're measuring the horizontal leg. So you can see how he's holding the fillet weld gauge blade flush to the base metal on the horizontal member or the vertical member and then he touches the other edge to the horizontal member and you can see that the fillet weld gauge touches the toe of the weld. So you've got enough material in there. In this slide we've got a concave fillet weld and we're going to use a concave fillet weld gauge to measure the effective size of a concave fillet weld. It's a little different than using the convex fillet weld gauge but it's pretty similar. But we're going to measure the effective size. We're not going to measure the legs. We're going to measure the effective size of the conca concave fillet weld. And you can see that dimension listed as effective size on the fillet weld in the diagram. Okay, we've got a 7 16 inch weld here. This is what we're looking for. But you can see in the red, we don't have enough material there. If this weld was the proper size for what we were looking for, we would have no space in there. But we've got space, so that tells me we need to put another weld pass in here so we've got enough material. So this is a fillet weld gauge measuring a concave fillet weld. You're measuring the same thing, but it just depends on what the shape of the weld is. Is it convex or concave? But you can see you put the fillet weld gauge flat, the blade of it flat against the horizontal member. You slide it in till it touches the vertical member. And then you look and see, hey, do I have enough material in here? Yep, we're good to go. But in this instance, no, we don't have enough material in there. You need to go tell the welder, hey, you need to put another weld pass in there so that I can buy these welds off. So you take your concave fillet weld gauge and you place the blade against the horizontal member. You slide it into the fillet weld until it touches. You see where the green is and it touches? And if you have enough material in the fillet weld, the red is going to touch. So this would be a properly sized 7 16 inch concave fillet weld. That's got to touch for this to be the correct size. If you don't have anything touching, like the previous um, slide, you would need to have your welder come back in and put some more filler material in there, and then you could buy this off. This isn't necessarily a defect. This is just an undersized weld. This isn't, but the previous one was. This is a properly sized weld, and you can see that the size of the weld is listed on the fillet weld gauge. Here's another example. You can see that the inspector is using the concave fillet weld gauge. He has the blade of the fillet weld gauge against the horizontal member. He slides it into the fillet weld and touches the fillet weld gauge against the vertical member and you can see that it's touching on the yellow and then also on the red it's touching. So that tells us we have enough material in this fillet weld gauge for it to be of a 5 16 inch size. When you're using a fillet weld gauge, be it convex or concave, you, it's giving you the same number, just a different method to get there. One is, like I said, for convex and the other is for concave, but it gives you the same thing. It measures whether there's enough material in that fillet weld to meet the sizing requirements that the designer put in there. In this module, we covered fillet weld gauges, how to use 
a fillet weld gauge to measure a concave fillet or a convex fillet. Pretty straightforward, but we got some vocabulary in there, so that's what we covered.